beyond their years. Number three, most people find positive ways to respond to the wisdom of a gifted child. Three points we want you to keep in mind. Three points. Some of us may struggle with knowing when to speak and when, when to keep silent. People are amazed at young people who displace wisdom that seem to be beyond their years. And last, most people find positive ways to respond to the wisdom of gifted children. All right. Here we go. Additional exposition thoughts for the teacher. This is commentary from Ecclesiastes, the first chapter, 3, 1 through 7b. And it reads, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the, under the heaven, a time to keep silent and a time to speak. Powerful there, isn't it? Powerful indeed. In Ecclesiastic 3, 1 and 8, Solomon sets forth some basic rules of timing in our lives. When we read them, we find some very special thoughts for our living. God sets forth a time for every experience in our lives. He knows every aspect of our lives, even before we formed in our mother's womb. In verse 1, Solomon provides an introductory statement. In this statement, he sets forth a guide for understanding the statement he was about to share. His poetic form for this listing is simply beautiful and logical. Case in point, he coupled a bright time in life and a dark time in life. For example, in verses 2, there is a time to be born, a bright time, and a time to die, a dark time. So is the nature of our lives. Although each of these other verses in verses 2 through 8 is meaningful, we place our focus on verse number 7, a time to be silent and a time to to speak, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak. This portion of verse 7 is most relevant to the rest of our lesson. There is a time to be silent and a time to speak. It is our, in the unit we learn from James' writing about the power of the tongue and why speaking out of turn can cause huge damage. Oh, the tongue. You can kill with the tongue. You can save with the tongue. You can bless with the tongue. You can encourage with the tongue. You can set a fire with the tongue that can't be put out, that will consume dangerous. You can kill character. You can kill people. You can lie on people. You can call it fire in a crowded theater and cause people to be die, be packed up and can't get out because they're running from an unexistent fire because you said fire. Folks are scared of fire. The tongue. What a weapon. What a weapon. Ooh. We speaking out of turn can cause huge problems. We look at Job's friend who were good confidence during his time of suffering when they were quite. It was when they started talking, they ran into trouble. Oh, his wife even told him to curse him and die. Curse God and die. Curse your God and die. Oh, the things that the tongue can say. How do you really know? when it is the right time to be silent or to speak. If you're within the Holy Spirit, you're being led by God, it will tell you when. Explain times when you found it difficult to be quiet. How did you handle that situation? What lesson did you learn? Oh, we all come into those situations in our lives. Let's go to the next outline, Luke, the second chapter, verses 39 to 40. And it reads, and when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city of Nazareth. Remember their pilgrimage where they went to Jerusalem and things like that, and dedicated the child, all those things like that. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom and the grace of God. When they say wax strong, you know, like something, you have seen something and they wax it. In other words, he's talking about strong, uh, firm, uh, Solid, okay? Child grew and waxed strong in spirit. The Holy Spirit filled with wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. The fear of the Lord, knowing the Lord. Don't forget now, this is Jesus. This is God's son. Jesus was with God during the creation to make another world. And the grace of the God was upon him. Jesus is God's son. Jesus is the word made flesh. The Word, God's Word, the Bible, what we study, what we speak of, the truth, our guide, our understanding. Jesus is the Word made flesh. 
All right, let's go. In Luke 22, 21 through 40, Luke shared some unique information that, about Joseph and Mary representing Jesus at the temple in keeping with the law. Joseph and Mary were devout Jews and followed the requirements set forth on the law. More <clears throat> than a millennium before, it should not be lost on us how Luke emphasized how obedient Joseph and Mary were to the law. After describing in details all they did to follow the law requirements in verse 21 through 38, he included a summary statement, had done everything required by the law of the Lord. Verse 39, Jesus was raised in a devout Jewish family. After finishing in the temple, Joseph took his family home to their home region, Galilee, and hometown Nazareth. Luke does not include any information about the wise men. Herod, the great decree against Jewish boys under the age of two. See Matthew 2, 1 through 22. And you all are very familiar with that. You have studied it many times. When Herod, when he was trying to seek out the baby child, claiming he wanted to uh, uh, praise him, uh, when he couldn't find him, he went about killing, killing a lot of time of weeping and gashing for women during that time. Okay. Reflecting his messiahship, the baby grew into an exceptional child. He was physically strong and very wise for his age. Jesus enjoyed his father's favor in his life. Verse 40, Jesus grew fulfilled Isaiah prophet, Isaiah the 11th chapter and two, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Guess what? All of those things can rest upon you. All those things can rest upon me, the teacher. All of those things can rest upon you as well. All right. Since Joseph gave very little information about the example of Jesus' childhood development, how many, how may his parents have dealt with him as he was growing up? That's the question. When young people are wise beyond their years, it amazes us. How can we learn from these youth that God uses, uses to impact our world? God will use anybody that he wants to. Let's go to Luke, the second chapter, verses 41 through 52. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. We know very much what the Passover over was. 42. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem and after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind on Jerusalem and Joseph and his mothers knew not where of it. Remember when we were going on trips and things and teeping up with kids? Remember when we was walking back and forth as kids, going from the Sunday school teacher back to the house? Some of them would be playing along the road and stuff like that. Others would follow close along behind the parent. The, the children can get lost. But this was a different situation with Jesus Christ. But they were supposing him to have been in the company when a day's journey. They sought him along their kinfolks and acquaintances. Jesus was not with them. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. And it came to pass, after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thy death with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought the sorrowing. Now, son, we've been looking for you. You had us worried. Why you didn't? You, why are you doing what you're doing? Okay, watch what Jesus said. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me, which ye not know that I must be about my father's business? Listen to what he just said. The wisdom, Mom, Dad. You know how I was born and I was conceived by the Holy Spirit, coming upon you, Mom. Don't you know I should be about my father's business? I am special in that regard to where who I am as the son of God. All right. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Why not now that I must be about my father's business? 
and they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. They didn't understand it. Joseph and Mary did not understand it. And when and he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them, but his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. Okay? And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. As a devout Jew, Joseph and Mary made the annual pilgrimage to Jerusalem for the one-day Passover and the weekend Passover of unleavened bread. It was one of the three required pilgrimages. What is the unleavened bread? Unleavened bread is bread without season, bread cooked in a hurry. That's when it was coming out of Egypt, when they had to have something to eat. They cooked, it, didn't add no seeds, didn't add no yeast, it didn't rise, it didn't end. All it was is bread, just plain old bland bread, something to fill them up. Didn't have time to put no season in it, okay? Just cook it and eat it. It was one of those three requirement periods. The other two were the Feast of Pentecost and the Feast of Tabernacles. We note that the word parents were used because it was assumed that Joseph was Jesus' actual father. Although the requirements was for men to attend these pilgrimages, these trips were often family affairs. So Mary and Jesus accompanied Joseph. The age of 12 was significant in Jewish culture. Verses 42, verses 42, verses 42. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. It was the time that boys entered into puberty and were old enough to begin their former study of the law. After the feast had ended, the parents departed from home. As the custom was, at that time, men and women travelled separately, traveled separately. So Joseph and Mary didn't realize that Jesus had stayed behind in Jerusalem. They thought he was with some of their other relatives. Realizing he was missing, Joseph and Mary returned to Joseph to find Jesus, as we said, in the midst of the Lord, doctors and lawyer. What should not be lost on us is that both Joseph and Mary had forgotten, had forgotten. Remember what I cited before, when Jesus said, "Don't I should be about my father." He was Jesus is saying, "You should know what who I am and what." But but, but Mary and Joseph had forgotten who their child really was. After they will travel from Jerusalem, a day travel back to Jerusalem, and a day looking for him, they found Jesus. In there, to their surprise, Jesus was sitting in the midst of the teachers of the law. He was listening to them, teach, asking them questions, and even answering that question. Contrary to traditional interpretation, Jesus does not teach the elders. Rather, he impresses them with his question. Wisdom is exercised through cognitive question. Jesus' interaction was astounding since he had not fully trained in the law. His mother gently scolded him for making them worry about him being lost. While Mary spoke of Jesus' earthly stepfather, Jesus responded referring to his heavenly father. He had to attend to his father's God's business. Of course, Jesus' response made no sense to Joseph and Mary. They all left Jerusalem together this time. <clears throat> Echoes in Luke uh, 2 and 19. Although his father wise was his God, although his father was his God, Jesus subjected himself to his duties to his earthly parents as outlined in the fifth commandment. See Genesis 20 and 12. He still obeyed his mother and father, his earthly mother and father, but he was still about his father's God's business. Okay? His mom, although cherished these remarkable things she had seen her son do, Luke closed the section of his writing by basically restating verse number 40, which reads thusly, And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. All right. This has been a very powerful lesson indeed based on the story of the 12 year old Jesus what is should be placed on the children and the church give them the opportunity to learn teach them well from an early age until their understanding from the crib to the house 
from the crib to the table, from the crib to school, from the crib to in the car, the crib to wherever they are. And by the time.